Mortal Shell is going to look very familiar in its style and execution if you have played any of the Souls games or Bloodborne. A large majority of the game is focused on the combat. You have a light and heavy attack to dispose of any of your current threats. You can perform some combos along with combining your light attacks and heavy attacks on the fly. With the sword, your light attacks are pretty quick, but they do not have that range, where the heavy attacks will have you thrusting forward with some momentum. Slashing at enemies does feel good. I I do like how you can interrupt enemy attacks with your own along with small touches like other smaller enemies showing some fear towards your kills. The sound effects added to the satisfying hits. The sound effects make it feel like you are really cutting through something. There's some weight behind each of your hits as well. You can really feel this when you are using your heavy attacks. Things start to get interesting when you look at your defense options. You have the standard dodge and that can help give you some breathing room but the game gives you two other options that can really change how you play. One ability that you gain right away is Harden. Mortal Shell is a bit different in that you do not have a shield and a standard block button. In this game, you can use Harden. This allows you to block any attack and not take any damage from it. The trick with it is, is that it's on a cooldown counter, so you can't spam the move. Since you use stamina for attacking and dodging, this is something else that you'll need to keep an eye out for. If you are left out in the open with no stamina, you might take a lot of unneeded damage. Attacking, dodging, and hardening can be all used together to fight really effectively. An interesting aspect with Harden is how you can regain stamina while you are hardened. So you can attack your enemy, and as they are about to strike, you can turn on Harden and then go back to attacking. When an enemy hits you when you are hardened, it sort of stuns them for a few seconds, giving you some room to either roll away or attack. There are other things to make note of too, like the parrying system. If you can get this down, you can even heal yourself in combat. I was horrible at parrying, so I stuck with trying to play the game a bit more conservatively as I used my hardening to my advantage. Another interesting aspect to Mortal Shell is with the second chance-like system. You essentially play as a being that takes over different shells. If you lose all of your health with a shell, you are ejected from that shell. In this form, you are extremely vulnerable and can die with a single hit. But if you can get back to your down shell, then you will be able to get all of your health back and continue the fight. I really like the new twist that Mortal Shell puts on the genre. Being able to earn a second chance can make or break some of the tougher fights. I also like the use of the hard move. It empowers the player with its use, but then the player needs to learn that they must use this move strategically and not randomly. One thing to note with using your second chance is that it's not easy to pull off. Many times I tried to get back to my shell and I died. If there are enemies in your way, you need to weave through them because they can block your path as you are desperately trying to retrieve your shell. And when you get ejected, there is this feeling of panic and excitement that hits you. The game provides you with the second chance, but they aren't giving it to you. You need to earn it by getting back to your shell. Since this isn't always easy to pull off, it's incredibly satisfying to do. Mortal Shell is really hard. With the new twists on the combat, I would say that this game is a bit more inviting than other games in the genre. Mortal Shell also likes to tell you very little when starting. When you start the game, you are presented with how the combat works, and that's it. Everything else you need to figure out on your own. This can generally be really frustrating, but it's extremely satisfying as you work to figure stuff out. This type of design is normal for the genre, and it's a nice reminder that while guided paths in modern games are nice, there's something special about learning it all for yourself as you explore. This is even done with the items within the game. When you pick up an item, you will not even know what it can do. You need to first use it so that you can learn what it does. This can create some annoying situations where you use a mushroom that will accidentally poison you. As you use items, you become more familiar with them and then their proficiency will grow. As you explore the game, you will find different shells to use. 
The shells sort of act like different classes that you can switch between throughout the game. You start out with an average build at first, but then you will find more interesting ones as you explore. One that you will find will have a large amount of health with a small amount of stamina and resolve for special attacks. Another will have a large amount of stamina, giving you a lot of room for attacking and dodging, but very little health. These shells come with their own unique upgrades to earn. The tank-like shell can stack a damage modifier with the more enemies that you kill, along with skills that decrease the amount of damage that you take. Another character can turn poison into healing for yourself, and this is really useful as it provides another avenue for you to heal. To upgrade, you will need to use both forms of the currency in-game. You will earn glimpses from finding them in the environments and from fighting some enemies. And then you will have the tar, which is similar to the souls that you would find in Dark Souls. When you die, you will drop all of your souls and you can go back and retrieve them once you respawn. You will not drop any of the glimpses when you die. The tar is also used for merchants to buy healing items and other equipment. Now as you can probably tell from my footage, I'm not very good at these types of games. But I really love my time with Bloodborne and Neo, so I'm always open to trying a new game in this genre. Mortal Shell took some time for me to really get into and find a groove that worked for me. For my initial hours, I found myself playing this game too much like the prior Souls games and forgetting to use my hardened ability. This really hurt me early on, but I think my prior muscle memory had me not using it as much as I should be. But once I started using it, I started to find a way to succeed in some of the normal fights. Another thing that caused frustration was how I really needed to learn the enemy's movements and attacks. Something I always valued in these games is how you will continually improve your player's skill as you learn from your failures. Since I found myself dying a lot, I found myself grinding more in the first area, gathering more healing items, and trying to get some upgrades for my shell. In doing this, I started to learn more about the enemy's moves and attacks, and I felt better equipped to deal with them. Once I gained enough confidence, I wanted to try and venture out into new areas of the map. As I did this, I fought new enemies and different combinations of the same enemies that I was already fighting. I really like the exploration in these games because you never really know what you're going to find. Everything is out to kill you and you're in this unknown land. So I found a cave and I decided to go in to see if there was some items to grab. What I found was a boss fight. At that moment, I took this opportunity to put my skills to the test and try and defeat this unexpected foe. This left turn into a boss encounter was a bit annoying since I felt unprepared at first, but this also provided me with a huge amount of success. I managed to defeat this boss on my first try and I felt a great amount of satisfaction, something that you usually find from defeating a boss in these types of games. But this this one felt extra special because here I was trying to learn the ins and outs of what Mortal Shell had to offer and I finally found a groove that I could stick with. At this point I found myself hooked on this game. As I kept exploring I fought another boss fight and was able to defeat that one as well. Mortal Shell does a good job of paying respects to its inspiration while also providing a nice spin on the genre. The exploration is fun and satisfying as you try to find hidden items and the next path for you to follow. The boss fights provide some nice surprises along with satisfying encounters. I enjoyed the progression as well, and how the game treated the player with respect, and how you develop your skill at playing the game. The game does drop you in without any assistance, but this is also what makes the game so satisfying to figure out. <clears throat> I had a few areas that I wanted to bring up for the flaws with Mortal Shell. The performance was mostly good on the Xbox One, but there were frequent parts where the frame rate would take a dive. They were noticeable and hurt some of the experience when they occurred. I had some odd graphical glitches that would pop up throughout the game. These were more noticeable and not actually hurting the experience. The lock-on is a bit wonky as sometimes I could not highlight the character I was directly pointing at or at all. Switching between characters when locked on was not as smooth as it could be. I also had one instance where I had full health and one area and then I went into another and my health was almost gone. I feel like the game glitched or I missed something that had happened because this did not occur again after this instance. I did like the power of the fun range weapon that you get to use. It takes some time to set up and fire and it packs a nice punch, but the aiming is really loose and imprecise. Outside of this stuff, I had a really enjoyable time with this game. As a casual Souls player, I found this one pretty accessible and very fun to get into. Mortal Shell is an unexpected surprise for this year. Really fun indies have a tendency to sneak up on you, and in many cases they pass you by because the market is full of so many games. This is one that you do not want to miss, especially if you're a Souls fan. I really enjoyed the use of the hardening mechanic as a means to block any incoming attack, but you couldn't use it all the time. You need to properly assess your enemies and read when it was the best time to block, dodge, or attack. The second chance system adds a fun aspect to the game where you can potentially earn a second chance at a fight. 
great. The different shells allow for some good replay value and it lets the player have some customization in their expression through the gameplay. I would recommend you check out Mortal Shell and thank you very much for watching. Mm -hmm.